Sonic R. Infamous for its janky gameplay and difficult racing controls, there's a strong likelihood that you've heard of this game before, probably because of its many negative reviews. This unique racer was developed by Traveler's Tales in conjunction with the Sonic team and was Sonic's first entry into the racing genre on a console. Prior to this game, which was released for the Sega Saturn, Sonic had released two racing entries on the Sega Game Gear, which was Sega's Game Boy competitor, Sonic Drift and Sonic Drift 2, which were both received pretty negatively by the public at the time of their release. Sonic R was no different. It received slightly more praise than its Sonic racing predecessors, as it was Sonic's second time stepping into 3D graphics, with Sonic 3D Blast being the first. However, with Mario Kart 64 being released a year prior in 1996, this game had plenty to live up to if it wanted to compete with the second best selling game on the Nintendo 64. You start the game on a flashy start screen. The Sonic R logo is flashing and every letter of it is bouncing to an incredibly catchy theme, known as Super Sonic Racing. And a still image of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles makes up the background. Today, I'm going to do a slightly deeper dive into Sonic R, talking about why I hold it so dearly to me while addressing the game's biggest shortfalls. The main game mode of Sonic R is the Grand Prix, a three lap race around a repeating track against four other characters. By default, you have access to four characters, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. You can also see that Eggman is somehow unlockable, but as an X through him, there are also four silhouettes of presumably unlockable characters crossed out. After selecting your character, you'll select a stage. There are a total of five Grand Prix stages, with one of them being crossed out as you will unlock it later on. Now, I would be doing this game a disservice if I didn't bring up the entire backstory for this game. I hesitate to call it a story as I've yet to see where in the game this can actually be learned, but I know you can find this information on Sonic R's official website, which is actually still up. I find that extremely cool, and I'll leave the link in the description for anyone who wants to check it out for themselves. The story follows Sonic and Tails, who after having many bouts with their nemesis Eggman are enjoying some time off, and they see it ad on TV in search for people to participate in the World Grand Prix. Tails begs Sonic to go check it out, who seems indifferent to the idea of racing, which I don't believe for a second. Sonic quickly changes his mind, I guess, and decides to participate in this race. Of course, the other two people to see the ad just happened to be Knuckles and Amy, which is oh so convenient. However, it seems this whole race is a ploy by Dr. Eggman. Eggman learned the Chaos Emeralds were spread across each of the four primary racetracks of the World Grand Prix, and figured it would be easier to just use Sonic and company to collect them for him, only to plan to steal them. I don't see how this could backfire at all. Anyway, that's the entire story. That's all it says. That's, there's, nothing, there's nothing to... to there's no, nothing else. There, that's it. That's <laughs> now that we understand the full story, let's talk about some of the gameplay. The game has multiplayer capabilities, but it's only able to play 1v1. You can either race your player two, dueling to see who can win in a three lap race, or you can play balloon mode, where you navigate the stages looking for five hidden balloons. There's also a time track mode similar to Mario Kart's time trials, where you race through the stage trying to get the best time you can. You can do the time attack mode on standard, reverse, which reverses the stage, balloon mode, or you can play a new tag mode in which you tag each bot player as they attempt to run away from you to win. Now, I mentioned earlier that I hold this game very highly. And for a game I hold so highly in my heart, this game's actual gameplay is its least desirable aspect. As I alluded to earlier as well, the entire game just feels janky and stressful. 
I will preface my conclusions about the game's controls with the fact that I am by no means a pro or anything like that. I wouldn't even consider myself particularly skilled in this game. However, you will probably find yourself thinking the same things if you play through this game for the first time as well. In classic Sonic fashion, you can get pretty fast, but turning and drifting is rough and often feels out of control. It is often easier for me to just run straight into a wall and try to bounce off of it until I'm heading into the right direction. All of that being said, some characters are definitely easier to control than other characters, but it doesn't make nearly enough of a difference. The default characters are Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. Each of these characters has their own abilities, each of which can influence how you navigate a track which can make the janky controls a lot easier to tolerate. A character like Tails, for example, can fly, Knuckles can glide, and Sonic can do a double jump. Thankfully, the bots you are racing against are not terribly difficult to beat. This is important because while you are racing, there are two other collection-based aspects in play, which can make things a bit complicated. The first is a new item to the Sonic series as a whole, the Sonic Token. Each course has five Sonic tokens hidden throughout the track. If you find all five Sonic tokens and finish top three in the race, which means you're not bottom two because there's only five, you will be presented with the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one race with a new unlockable character. The four characters you can unlock through Sonic tokens are Metal Sonic, Tails Doll, Eggman Robo, and Metal Knuckles. These unlockable characters all have similar abilities to the characters that they're based off of, but I find that all of them are just slightly better than the ones they're based off of. For example, Metal Sonic and Sonic are pretty similar, but Metal Sonic can actually kind of glide across water for a lot longer than Sonic can, meaning you can kind of glide and then jump, and that resets your glide. So. Effectively with Metal Sonic, you can kind of just float across any water in any stages. And there's a lot of similar things like that with the other characters as well. The other collectible item is a Sonic staple, the Chaos Emeralds. I mean, this was the whole point of the story, right? Eggman wanted us to collect these so he could then steal them from us. Each stage has one or two Chaos Emeralds, depending on which stage you're on. Collecting these is the main objective of progressing the single player experience. Your goal is to collect each Chaos Emerald in a stage, AND you have to come in first place when you collect them. If you fail to come in first place, your Chaos Emeralds will not stay with you and you will have to try again. Now once you collect every Chaos Emerald in all four of the default stages, you get to unlock Super Sonic. As a kid, Unlocking Super Sonic was super cool to me. I wasn't at a point in my life where I was able to beat a lot of games, leaving me to mainly play some racing games. And being able to unlock Super Sonic in one of them, that was just the coolest thing to me. Super Sonic is definitely the easiest character to navigate any stage with, especially the Radiant Emerald stage, which honestly just kind of sounds like a Valorant rank, but is actually the stage that is unlocked when you've collected all the Chaos Emeralds. Super Sonic is honestly the only character in this game that feels good to control. He can glide over water similar to Eggman, except he's also the fastest character, unlike Eggman, while still maintaining the ability to double jump like Sonic. Completing this course rewards you with Dr. Eggman as a character. You know, he was crossed out earlier and now we get him after we have Super Sonic. Right. <laughs> Even though Dr. Eggman is kind of the reward for beating the game, honestly, racing with Super Sonic through Radiant Emerald kind of feels like the true reward for playing through this janky game. So, you're probably wondering by this point, what makes the game so lovable to me if all I can seem to do is diss the way the racing, which is what the game is, a racing game, feels. And this is where we talk about the soundtrack. Oh my gosh. This soundtrack, headlined by TJ Davis with composer Richard Haquez, feels like it has its own soul. There's a part of me that will admit nostalgia definitely plays a large role in my deeper admiration for the soundtrack, but if you never heard it, I've been playing it this whole time, but 
continue to listen. The lyrics are simple, yet meaningful, leaving the average player being able to find a way to relate to them in their own personal, beautiful way. Each song for each stage has its own unique way of connecting itself to the stage. Some, like Living in the City for the stage Radical City, are a bit more on the nose, but others like Can You Feel the Sunshine on the Resort Island stage, a sunny stage with water and hills, makes you feel a deeper connection to the game than any racing game soundtrack I can think of. The perfect blend of stunning soulful vocalist combined with the 90s video game instrumental Suburb audio mixing creating fun harmonies and a call and response like interaction with background singers that are actually all just TJ Davis make the entire race feel like a real event that you're participating in as the player. There's no fake crowd or any visible spectators in the game, but the music can make you feel like you're racing with everyone watching. Now I might be gassing up the soundtrack a lot, but truthfully, I don't have many examples in gaming where the soundtrack is this much better than the actual game. I don't really replay this game often unless I'm looking for a crazy nostalgia trip, but I will frequently listen to the soundtrack to relive those memories I have playing the game as a child. If you've never played Sonic R, I can understand why you might think this is a terrible racing game made in an era when Sega was doing really about anything to compete with Nintendo's dominance of the gaming industry. And honestly, I can't even say you're really wrong. As we talked about, the game is just janky. But to me, Sonic R will always be a strange, clunky portal of nostalgia to a simpler time in my life. Also, when I was playing through the game for the background recording that I've been using for this video, I learned that you can turn the vocals off I don't, I don't know why you would do that, but I mean, if you really don't like them, there, there, you, there's an option. But that's like the whole thing I, that was like the whole thing I wrote this video for, is like the music's really cool. Like, I don't know why you 